Greetings, everyone, and welcome. My name is Tim Kyes of GodSaveTheKing.org. So in my many years of research into the nativity, one of the most common questions I get asked is, how do we know that Jesus wasn't born on December 25th? Now, the proper response to that question is, well, how do you know that he was? You see, because by asking that question that way, the person who asks that question that way is assuming that he was born on December 25th, and that's an established fact. There has been a ton of debate about whether or not Jesus was born on December 25th or not for hundreds, if not thousands of years. It is not an established fact. And you know how it is. These days, all the buzz is to say, well, you know, follow the science. Well, the better phrase is actually follow the evidence, not follow the science, follow the evidence, because the rules of evidence vary between disciplines. The rules of evidence in a laboratory, for example, uh, where you can conduct a controlled experiment under controlled conditions are quite different from the rules of evidence, say, in a courtroom or the rules of evidence when you're examining history which is what we are doing here. So there's different rules of evidence for different disciplines. So the proper question becomes, well, what's your evidence? Right. If you're assuming that Jesus was born on December 25th, and I'm saying, well, no, he wasn't, then what's your evidence and what's mine? You show me your evidence, I will show you my evidence. So what evidence do you have? that Jesus was in fact born on December 25th. So you see, it's a logical fallacy that I, or anyone else for that matter, has to disprove December 25th birth date as if it's an established fact when it's not an established fact. All I have to do is prove that it is more reasonable to conclude from the evidence that he was born on a different day. Let's say you have a theory about something that produces three possible conclusions and you need to decide which one makes the most sense. So let's say theory number one has five pieces of evidence and that theory number two has 10 pieces of evidence and that theory number three has 50 pieces of evidence. Well, the rules of evidence tell us that it is more reasonable to conclude that the theory with 50 pieces of evidence makes more sense than the ones with 10 or 5. When I ask people what's their evidence, these are the most common comebacks that I get. Number one, well, everybody already knows that he was born on December 25th. That's comeback number one. Comeback number two is we've been celebrating his birth on December 25th for, quote unquote, thousands of years, hundreds or thousands of years. That's comeback number two. Comeback number three is, well, how could millions of people, air quotes again, how could millions of people celebrating his birthday on December 25th possibly be wrong? That's comeback number three. Comeback number four goes like this. Early historical records verify that he was born on December 25th. That's comeback number four. And then comeback number five is, well, the Bible says so. So let me address comeback number five first. Because if the Bible really did say so, this conversation would already be over. Therefore, either the Bible doesn't say so, or at least it doesn't say so explicitly. I'll address this more later. So let's look at these other comebacks. Comeback number one, everybody already knows that Jesus was born on December 25th. Well, this isn't evidence. And what it is, is it's a classic example of what we refer to as anecdotal evidence. Now, what is anecdotal evidence? Anecdotal evidence is based on casual observations or indications rather than rigorous analysis. It's also based on information passed along by word of mouth and not objectively documented, and it is evidence based on individual experience. The five comebacks I listed above fit the definition of anecdotal evidence to a T. They are based on casual observation, word of mouth transmission, and personal experience. In other words, what they lack is some kind of documentation. 
in summary, of the people who asked me this question. It seems most who believe Jesus was born on December 25th believe so because, frankly, everyone else does. A classic favorite of children everywhere. The bottom line is that anecdotal evidence isn't really evidence at all. Or, as I have been saying for years, tradition is not evidence. Real evidence is what really matters in this and all historical questions. You show me your evidence, I'll show you mine. But if that weren't enough, these anecdotal answers are factually inaccurate. First, as mentioned earlier, everyone does not know that Jesus was born on December 25th. There has been an intramural debate within the Christian community regarding the date of the birth of Jesus for at least hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. Certain denominations celebrate his birthday at one time, other denominations celebrate his birthday at another time, and lots of denominations don't celebrate his birthday at all. Along these lines, Ezra Stiles, the seventh president of Yale College, one of the founders of Brown University and a Congregationalist minister and theologian, astutely noted in his diary, dated December 25th, 1776, we read, this day, the nativity of our blessed Savior is celebrated throughout three quarters of Christendom, but the true day is unknown. On any day, I can readily join with my fellow Christians in giving thanks to God for his unspeakable gift and rejoice with them in the birth of a Savior. Though if it had been the will of Christ that the anniversary of his nativity should have been celebrated, he would have at least let us have known the day. Additionally, no, we haven't been celebrating Christmas for thousands of years. Now, I'm going to acknowledge the fact that using the phrase thousands of years could be figurative. I get that. I understand that. They don't literally mean thousands. They just mean for a very long time. The idea is that we have been celebrating Christmas for a very long time, when in reality, no, we really haven't been celebrating it all that long. Christmas as we know it has really only been around for a couple hundred years, not thousands, not hundreds, not hundreds and hundreds of years, but just a couple hundred years. The word Christmas is not found in the Bible. It's not there ever. This should be obvious, but the word Christmas simply didn't exist at the time the Bible was written. The single word Christmas, which is a contraction of Christ's mass or mass for Christ, started to be used somewhere around the middle of the 14th century. The oldest written use of the phrase Merry Christmas is in the Oxford English Dictionary dated 1534. The phrase Merry Christmas, however, was not likely used by Protestants and was surely avoided by Puritans. The Puritans did not celebrate Christmas because they sought a more biblically pure faith and Christmas is simply not in the Bible. Plus, contextually in its historical context, the phrase Merry Christmas is at least a strong allusion to, if not a direct reference to intoxication. Puritans in England and colonial America shunned and suppressed Christmas as unbiblical. Oliver Cromwell banned Christmas festivities in England between 1649 and 1660. Christmas was also illegal in Massachusetts between 1659 and 1681. George Washington specifically chose Christmas night to cross the Delaware River and attack Trenton during the American Revolution because he knew that the British and Hessian troops celebrated Christmas while Americans did not. Overindulgence in food and drink would make them unprepared to fight. The modern Christmas tradition, that of a long-standing domestic holiday, is an invented tradition and has only been around for a couple hundred years. The real history of the holiday that has come to be known as Christmas, which for most of us is axiomatically associated with the birth of Christ, has been a veritable catalog of licentiousness and debauchery. Finally, how could millions of people be wrong? Well, just look around. Even a casual survey of top world religions by population reveals four religions with over a billion followers, four more with over 100 million followers, and a dozen with over a million followers. Now granted, 
relativism is becoming more and more common even within established religions. But nonetheless, multiple independent claims of truth are by definition mutually exclusive. If one major world religion proves to be the truth, then billions, not just millions of people, have been wrong for a very long time. The claim that early historical evidence confirms a December 25th birthday is actually relatively infrequent when it comes to rigorous debate. It's often treated as more of an assumption or a question. In other words, something like early historical evidence confirms a December 25th birthday, doesn't it? Right? Like that. That's It's assumed. Based upon the anecdotal evidence that Jesus was born on December 25th, some people just assume that there must have been other evidence to support the hypothesis and simply open their mouth without investigating. The simple fact of the matter is that early historical evidence of a December 25th birthday is inconclusive. First, there isn't much to go on, period. I am unaware of any historical references to a December 25th birthday earlier than the third century. This means that nearly 200 years passed before anyone wrote anything down about the subject. It is as if for the first 200 years after Christ, the apostles and their disciples and their disciples either didn't know, didn't care, or didn't bother to record anything about when Jesus was born. Then, once someone did write something down, it was not recorded testimony from an earlier source but a standalone hypothesis taking a stab at when Jesus may have been born based off of a possible Hebraic interpretive technique. In other words, the earliest historical records of a possible December 25th birthday are demonstrably not due to a chain of evidence descended from eyewitness testimony, as might be assumed. The few early historical records that claim a December 25th birthday are too few in number, from too long after the fact, based on unsubstantiated hypotheses and of too questionable documentary evidence to be considered reliable. The only conclusion one can reach about these documents is that they are inconclusive. One cannot reasonably conclude that they demonstrate that Jesus was born on December 25th. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't, but the early historical records are inconclusive. This brings us back to the Bible says so. So as stated earlier, if the Bible really did say so, this discussion would already be over. The fact of the matter is that the Bible does not explicitly or implicitly give a birth date for Jesus of Nazareth in the gospel narratives. And again, our assumptions play a central role. What we assume we know about the birth of Christ usually comes from a twisted form of reverse engineering. Because we are already familiar with Christmas-related resources, such as Christmas cards, Christmas carols, and the ubiquitous Christmas pageant with its live nativity scene, we tend to look backwards at the biblical record through a Christmas-colored viewfinder and correspondingly find what we expect to find. The obvious problem is that this is bias as opposed to critical examination of the evidence. The flip side, however, is that there is a plethora of credible evidence if you know where and how to look. The infancy narratives, that's Matthew and Luke, have more chronological markers than pretty much any other record in the Bible, the Gospel of Luke in particular. These markers include references to historical figures and historical events, plus events in the Jewish religious calendar. These kinds of chronological markers make it possible for us to at least estimate when Jesus was born. And if the markers are accurate enough, and we have enough of them to cross-reference with each other, maybe even pinpoint some candidate dates. Finally, there is the astronomical data. When the wise men from the east visited Herod in Jerusalem, they cited the observation of a celestial event as their reason for traveling to Jerusalem to pay homage to the new king of the Jews. The text implies that this celestial event not only informed the wise men that a king had been born, but also told them at least approximately when he had been born. Furthermore, the text implies that Herod used this information to narrow down the time frame of the Messiah's birth for use in his nefarious scheme. 
these astronomical markers are extremely provocative because if they can be identified, they are accurate, very accurate, a kind of cosmic clock, so to speak. A unique celestial event could potentially pinpoint the birth of he who was born king of the Jews, possibly within hours, let alone within days, weeks, months, or years. The problem, of course, is that, again, we are not explicitly told what the celestial event was, or at least so it seems. But to everyone who has studied the Bible for any length of time, we are aware that the Bible is full of unsuspected surprises. According to Hebrew hermeneutics, that is biblical interpretation, the Bible can contain codes and ciphers. What this could mean is that although the date of Jesus' birth may not be cited explicitly or even implicitly, it may be in fact cited with spectacular accuracy cryptically. That is, if we can decipher the code. The point of this video is not to cite and critically examine the evidence. That is the purpose of the many other articles and videos that I have put out. The purpose of this video has been to share in the broad strokes why the often perceived as unassailable belief that Jesus was born on December 25th is really a house of cards. In conclusion, is it possible that Jesus was born on December 25th? Sure, it's possible. But the odds of Jesus of Nazareth being born on December 25th are exactly one in 365, precisely the same as any other day of the year selected at random. Again, is it possible? Of course it's possible. But the real question isn't whether it's possible, but whether it is probable or reasonable. The simple fact of the matter is that there is very little credible or positive evidence that points towards a December 25th birth date, only tradition, which is anecdotal evidence at best. When positive evidence regarding alternative dates is introduced into the investigation, we quickly discover that these theories should be investigated and frankly critically examined because they will produce a more credible birth date for Jesus of Nazareth. When we consider these two assertions, that there is little to no positive evidence that point towards a December 25th birth date and that significant positive evidence points us elsewhere then the answer to the question, is it probable or is it reasonable, is a resounding no. Thank you for joining me today. This is Tim Kyes of GodSaveTheKing.org. God Save the King.